This is a picture. I mean, the, I made a picture which resembles a lot the one in your lecture notes, so you don't have to copy that. You can make, you can make the notes right there if you want. So triple triple vector product, or triple scalar product, it's something which is like this. So you have three vectors. Again, you only take the vectors from R3, so you only look at the three-dimensional vectors. And you just combine them in this particular order. You take B and C cross product, and then you do the dot product of the result. The whole thing will be, what is it? Like a nature of the whole thing will be a number. So this number, all we have to do now, we have to see, I mean, like, okay, first two things involved in this, in this, in this topic. We have to see how to compute this, and we have to know the geometric interpretation of that. Computationally, computationally, look what happens. If I have the components of my vector, and this time I give you like a short version of it, or if I call the components of my A vector A sub J, the components of B vector B sub J, and the components of C vector C sub J, as the elements are, are free, so this notation is unambiguous. Uh, I give you the name of the components, and you know how many of them, because they're all in R3, so it's only, it will be three of them. Look what you do. First, you look at the cross product, which you know how to compute that. This is the this determinant. If you do the expansion for this determinant, I'll do it once. We did it already today once, although the letters were different here. There was A and B set of letters. This, this time it's B and C, but conceptually we did this already. So the first component of the vector will be this little minor. The second component of your vector will be this little minor. And finally, the, the last component will be this little minor. It should become a routine by now. Uh, now, this is the components of your, these are the components of your vector. Now, if you put next to it your vector A, and if you dot product this vector with this with this vector, remember how we, do, we, how we do the dot product, we take the first component here times the first component here, first comp second component here times the second component here, third component here times the third component here. Here's the result of that. First component times the first component. Then goes second component times the second component. And third component times the third component. And just formally following, the, following the, the steps we do when we compute this or that. We, when we compute the cross product, that's how we do that. When we compute the dot product, that's how we do that. Now, when I look at this, what, is it, what does it look like? It looks like the row decomposition for specifically now numerical determinant, right? You can think about this as the first element in the first row times the, I mean, the element which sits here times the corresponding minor. You can think of this as the element which sits here times the associated minor. You can think of this as the element which sits here times the associated minor. So this long expression is just effectively, this long expression is just this, this time numerical determinant. And that's our pathway towards computing, computing the triple scalar product. All we have to do, we have to put the components of my vector. We have to be careful. We have to keep the order. So the first factor components goes first row. Second factor components go second row. Last factor components go last row. And that's how we compute the triple scalar product. Now, geometrically, 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 scalar triple product, it is, it will be, I mean, I'll explain it in a second, it will be the volume no, it won't be the volume. It will be the absolute value. I mean, sorry, the absolute value of this val of this number will be the volume of the parallelepiped based on these three vectors, the one which I pictured here. So, the absolute value of v is the volume of this parallelepiped based on the vectors a, b, and c. The reason for that. You can easily see the reason for that. Look at this, because when you look at the dot product, when you look at the dot product, you know the dot product geometrically. What is it? It is the length of the vector A times the length of this big vector in the bracket. And we know it from the, from the slide above. This length is, in fact, the area of the parallelogram here. Actually, I didn't, 
yes, times the cos of the angle in between. So let me just name the vectors here. I just realized I didn't name the vector. So this is vector B. This is vector C. This is the vector A. So this A, capital A, kilogram, and that's the on the same on the same side. It's the length of this vector, which is discovered it on the slide above. So the the scalar product of this A with this bracket is the geometrically it's the length of A, length of the bracket, which is the area times the cos of the angle in between this angle here. That's the angle theta. Now the length of A, which is this vector, times the cos of this angle will give you the projection of this A onto the this is a cross product, right? Vector. This is a vector perpendicular to this vector and this vector. So this, this, the product of the A times the cos of this angle, that's a projection onto this piece. That's the height of your parallelogram. Oh, sorry, parallelepiped. So this bit and this bit, this is just the height. And A is the area, and that's something from the geometry we know. The product of the height and the underlying area gives you the volume of the structure. I mean, of the, of the parallel, parallel pipette. That's why this is the rather quick, but still, I think it's a complete demonstration why if you compute the triple scalar product, or scalar triple product, and if you take the absolute value of that, it will be the volume of the parallel pipette based on those vectors. I, I said it a few times already, the absolute, you have, to be sh you have to make sure that you take the absolute value. The reason for that is that sometimes this cross product vector on this picture, you see, if you imagine yourself sitting up here, the turn from the B to C, it is counterclockwise. But sometimes this vector may go down, which will make this value negative, although this will not affect, the, will not affect this, this conclusion that the absolute value of this value still delivers the volume of this parallelepiped. 